six pound tarpaulin. Can you sleep under it? Would you trust it? Let's find out. The DD Hammocks 3x3 Multicam. Somewhat of a bit of a, a legendary piece of equipment, some may say, in the bushcraft world now. It's been reviewed a million times, it's been looked at. That's not the focus of today's video. Today, we are looking at the super cheap. Are they any good for camping or bushcraft? How big is it? This one is 177 centimeters wide. It's a really random number by... Two hundred and thirty-seven centimeters. That is some random cutting. I'm going to guess that's because this material probably comes off of a massive reel, and somewhere in a factory, someone's done the maths and worked out they get the most amount of tarpaulins out of that reel by cutting it to these sizes. Straight away, you're not getting a uniform measurement to work with. On this side, you can see it's just a plain green, a kind of shiny finish. And on this side, it's obviously got some kind of a print. I'd say this kind of looks like an American camo uh, print on the, on the outside edge. So it's quite easy to differentiate between what's on the outside and what should be on the inside, to me. Taking a look at the eyelets, I'm actually reasonably impressed with this. The eyelets are all stamped and pressed, and there seems to be quite a decent thickness, okay, of how far over the tarpaulin has been folded. And I'm not sure how it's adhered, but they've gone to the added extra of putting a plastic reinforcement on the corners. That's not something that you typically see on a lot of these. Uh, more often than not, the ones you tend to get are just like this. So just to give you a kind of a, a closer idea of how many people you'd, you'd put underneath this thing, here's my answer, one. One person and their equipment would be able to sleep under one of these. There's not much room for much else, to be honest. Once you've created a bit of an A-frame pitch to it, that's your lot. Noise factor could also be a bit of a limitation for some, depending on where you are and what you want to do with this, okay? This isn't exactly the quietest material. Another thing you may notice is the complete lack of eyelets across the back. So the only eyelets on this are crimped on the outside edges. You could just kind of roll this thing up, I guess, and I mean, there's probably a number of ways of carrying it, but that's about as small as it will go, which is pretty much a standard NATO water, water pouch. Or maybe you'd have it rolled up on the back of your gear not sure really. It's fairly easy to deploy. I would probably go the added extra mile of adding on bits of uh, cordage so that this is good to deploy straight, straight from my pack. Well, I'm actually surprised because when I, when I look really closely at these tiny little squares or rectangles that make up this thing, I'm expecting to be able to see gaps where I think water's gonna come through. And of course, having all these tiny little squares cut in here in this print and this pattern seems to allow it to seems to allow for movement it creates a sort of a ripstop finish and these are without doubt hard wearing but are they any good for camping now remember you're going to have to bring some bits and pieces to the party as this doesn't come with pegs it doesn't come with pre-attached cordage make sure you've got all the bits before you go test it here in a woodland setting, I'm gonna be looking for two small diameter trees like these two here, and I'm gonna to need to clear the ground. What we're talking about here is, is a kind of a one person setup. So I think I wanna be closer to the ground for this one. I'm gonna try it about waist height and see how we get on.
even though the dimensions that we've measured out on this particular one are a bit odd or unorthodox, it's still got quite a nice form in its rectangular shape and something we can work with. A tiny little granny knot on a loop. I'm gonna pop up through the eye, feed this through. And as some of you may remember from our other videos on tarpology, check them out after this. You'll know the secret to having a well set out tarpaulin is to get the ends tensioned out correctly first, then the middles and the corners last. So I'm making a lovely little number four. This figure of four sliding knot is a bit like an adaptation of a midshipman's knot, but with a little hitch at the end just to secure it. Part of the reason at the end of this little uh, slippery sliding figure of four knot, I have this little hitch which leaves a, a tail is because if I end up with a load of uh, rainwater buildup traveling along the rope and heading for the middle of the tarp, this is so tightly bit bitten down on my uh, ridge line, the water will simply run off and down here. And you can just repeat the process at the other end. Bungees are a good alternative because they're cheap, easy, and they allow that saving of time. The next thing I'm going to do is cut two bits of paracord to tension out the middle, and then we'll go with the corners last. So far, bearing in mind it's a super cheap and cheerful item, this isn't actually looking too bad to me. And as you can see, the coloration is blending pretty well with its surroundings. Just another point on the, the problematic side of using a tarpaulin like this with its very unorthodox size, it doesn't naturally allow itself to have those well-known time-tested and calculated tie-down fixing points. Rather sadly, I've just noticed it doesn't have a fixing point right in the middle, which means it's not gonna give me that optimal tension running through the tarpaulin. I either need to use twice the amount of cordage, or some of you may know, I carry a pebble in my pocket at all times. I carry this for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is I can place the pebble up underneath a tarpaulin that has failed in some way, or I need to tie something down. Okay, and with my simple loop in my cordage, all I can do is poke a little bit through itself, okay, to make a running eye. I can wrap that around the pebble, and straight away I've now got a, a fixed tie down point in the middle. But unfortunately, due to the type of material, okay, and this being slightly more tensile and rigid, this isn't going to work out for me here. People always talk to me about, you know, and ask me, why have you got this pebble in your pocket? And I, the answer is I could give them a whole range of emotion, but um, I use it for burnishing and finishing off craft items. I use it for a number of things, but most of all, it's grounding and it allows me to bring the outdoors indoors and have it, have it on me at all times. I am doing exactly the same knot and this is where it really comes into its own because what it does, it gives me this adjustability factor to allow to put tension on, or if there was a sudden gust of wind, okay, this would end up giving instead of ripping out the eyelet. So this really is a handy knot to know. I'm having to go straight to the corners because the middle option was taken away from me as it hasn't been designed with a middle eyelet. It's beginning to look like it's gonna have great tension on the corners but not much going for itself in the middle. It, it basically forces my hand to have to use more cordage and more temp pegs, which in turn just means more admin. In saving money, I've cost myself time. That's two corners done and you can already see it's super saggy in the middle for the fact that it doesn't have this central eyelet, which would, which would really just bring it into its own. And you can see these ridges, how these then come into their own. I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt because you never truly know until you've got all of your, your corners pegged out in this type of scenario. And I'm going to, there's actually a seagull being attacked by a buzzard as we speak overhead here in the woodland. Here we go, moment of truth. We head over to the other side. Let's see how this shapes up or doesn't. So just a really basic top tip of mine for where and how to tension out the corners of a tarpaulin. Imagine that the 90 degree angle, okay, so in this case, this plastic adapter is in fact an arrow. So using that methodology, okay, I can see the corner here, 
is pointing to about here somewhere. Take up the tension, make my number four. So I can see my number four. Finger goes inside once, finger goes inside twice. Okay, and I pull that tight now and I've got this tension on and as close down to the knot as possible. I'm gonna go up and over, bring my finger over the top and as I pull my finger out, that loop's gonna go through and I'm gonna pull all of this the whole way through and really tighten that down. And this nifty little knot then allows me to create tension We'll take tension off. So this potentially could save your tarpaulin from ripping out on the eyelet with a sudden rogue gust of wind as the knot will give. You'll wake up to the sound of. You'll roll out of bed and just be able to retension that tarpaulin. So just having a closer look at this now and walking around it, I can see with this kind of dappled light hitting the forest floor, that the, the camouflage, I would say, is actually working pretty well. I'd say the eyelets are robust and, and able to cope with the diameter of, uh, and, and strength, tensile strength I've put through these. Um, it, it's got it in spades. This is another good feature. In terms of space in here, there's enough for me inside my sleeping bag on a roll mat and my bag or my kit but not much else. So this is very much a one person shelter. One thing you would definitely have to watch closely for is snagging this tarpaulin on anything in any way, shape or form. In conclusion, and with absolute honesty, do I think this has a place? Is it any good for bushcraft and camping in the outdoors? Well, yes, it does have a place. If you're somebody who is on a budget, if you're somebody who's just looking to camp through the summer season and through the, and maybe in the back garden with the kids, it definitely has a place. My money personally is still with the DD hammocks as an outdoor professional and for what I do and for what, in, the, in the way that I would use a tarpaulin all throughout the year and in the very harshest of conditions. But actually, if you're looking to just get out with the kids, have a bit of fun, learn, okay, how to set a tarpaulin up, there's nothing wrong with that. It definitely has a place. Mm -hmm.